regardless of whether Damien Hardwick coaches next year or not, this decision will, it, it's a, a tsunami sized ripple effect across the competition, isn't it, in terms yeah. of what happens next? So Ken Inkley obviously out of contract this year. Port Adelaide keep telling us they're waiting until August, but that timeline has now been blown to completely and utterly to smithereens. There's eight coaches out next year, perhaps headlined by Stuart Jew, who's out of contract in 2024 and under pressure of Gold Coast. So what this does from here, and that's without even uh, talking about assistant coaches and those who've worked under Ken Hinkley, of course, and some of the guys that are uh, that are really highly rated there as well and what it, they might do. Yeah, I sat in this studio yesterday and spoke about the eight coaches who are out of contract at the end of 2024. That's now seven because Damien Hardwick stepped away. I mean, even coaches like Justin Longmuir and Matthew Nix, who would have felt far more secure yesterday mm. than they were today because just like it was last year, Tim, with the shadow of Alistair Clarkson and Ross Lyon and Brad Scott hanging over the coaching fraternity, it's now the shadow of Damien Hardwick because mm. all these clubs will be thinking, are we better off with Damien Hardwick than we are with who we've got? Stuart Jews, the other one. Chris Scott, Simon Goodwin and Craig McRae, the other three. And you'd imagine, I mean, my view is that none of those three would be in trouble of getting replaced by Damien Hardwick. But the other ones I mentioned, mm. you don't know. Damien Hardwick's a three-time premiership coach and some clubs can be pretty ruthless when they want to be. Does put Stuart Jew under uh, all does sorts it? of pressure? Yeah, I think it does. Um, I think when a, a big fish is is on the market like Damien Hardwick, then it does change. It I does don't think change so. Clubs. No, I disagree. I and disagree. on the other side of it, how attractive is the Richmond job to replace Damien Hardwick? I mean, this is a big club, well resourced. Again, a, a, a good a position financially right. as it's ever been. Plays at the MCG, you know, for ninety percent of the year. Really, but okay, I'll put. The, yeah. the the counter argument to that, they've got one of their superstar players of all time, Cochin about to retire probably at the end of this year. Revolt would probably retire mm. at the end of this year. The three pillars, if you if you were to say, okay, what has been who have been the great three pillars of their team and the other one would be Dustin Martin and who knows what, what he may do in the short term too. I mean, those three players may be gone this time next yeah, year. But you get to put Doesn't your own change? stamp you get to put your own stamp on the club. You get a three or four year deal to coach, then you get to put your own stamp and imprimatur on the club. Well, probably you create your own list. You, well, you, you always do that. It doesn't matter where you go, you get that opportunity. But if you're saying to me it's going to be the best list to take over right now, I would disagree. No, with I that. didn't say it was the best list to take over, but that is uh, obviously a plum job. The Richmond it's Football a, Club. It's a oh, yeah, no, no, it's you a want big, for nothing. It's a big club, yeah. But with that comes with that comes yeah, the pressure and course. the stresses that some of the other smaller clubs there's don't a, experience either. There, there's a big club tax, yeah, and it works for you. Do you think that? Do you think they would look at somebody like? Um, yeah, you know, I mean, the conversation always moves on really quickly when something like this, this happens. You know, Lepich was there. He's got great cachet in this business. They know what he's like. Do you think that they would look at somebody like him that has been there well, already? At surely, the club their first, role? surely their first call. And they would go through a proper process and they'll be the assistant. They'll be the Josh Cars of the world who's the next in line and all those guys. But their first call has to be to Ken. Has to be. To? Ken Hinckley. Right. Okay. Well, he doesn't have a contract. He doesn't have a job for next year. He is plan 1A, B and C at the moment, surely. Okay. When you're looking at this, though, harshly at it, and he hasn't been able to deliver the silverware to oh, this point, yeah. does that not come part of the conversation too? Well, only one team can win the premiership, and it didn't hurt Ross Lyon's credentials that he wasn't quite able to get over the hump. I think we all agree that Ken Inkley is probably A little bit not different. Only... I mean, Ross Lyon had teams in grand finals, multiple teams in grand finals. Okay, so Kenny's played off in a couple of prelims. We all agree he's a good coach, and probably coaching as well as he's ever coached at the moment, do we not? Yeah, no, they're going well at the moment. They are, yeah. I, mean, I just don't see that he would be – if you're saying to me he's going to be the first call, I don't see him being the first call. No? No. no Who's the first call? Well, I, I just said that before. I said Lepich would possibly be the first first call. I mean, he's already occupied a space there. He's been part of the – rich. he understands Richmond. They understand him. But as good as Leper is tactically, his senior coaching resume doesn't hold up to Ken's. No, because he if that's, if that's he, the... he started he started at a poor you know at a poorer club at a time when they were going through some rebuilding as a first up coach. One would have to assume that you are going to be a lot better second time round when you've had the experiences, not just the coaching experience. You've had the life experiences that he's had now too. If yeah. he wants to, maybe Port, he doesn't want to. Port Adelaide were bottom of the barrel too, though the tarps over the seats and and everything. So the change at that club in in Ken Hinkley's time has been uh, has been immense. But uh, he's coaching under all sorts of pressure at the moment. I just think he would, he would be my first call anyway, given uh, his contract situation as well. But 
uh, I think they will come far and wide for this job. Of course, they would for the Richmond Footy Club job. We know that his contract is up at the end of this year, right? At some point, though, they keep winning. The pressure continues to build, to build, to build. The questions will continue to be asked. Are you going to re-sign mm. him? Mm. Ken, do you want to stay here as a coach? Mm. <laughs> at some point, you can see this blowing up in their faces and disrupting their charge yep. to a grand final this year. This is the most fascinating strand out of Damien Hardwick's decision to quit as Richmond coach is what happens at Port Adelaide. Now, that, those conversations had already started. And well, what, hang on, just, that, on, just on that point about Hardwick and Port like – He's a premiership player, so obviously there's some goodwill around yep. him, but that doesn't necessarily mean to say that he wants to go and live in a, in South Australia and coach them either. No, we're only speaking from the Port Adelaide side of things and what it does to their well-stated, publicised timeline that we won't make a call on Ken Hinckley until August of this year. But now with the Richmond job opening, what does that do for that timeline? And the conversations had already started because they're eight and two. Mm. Ken's reinvented himself. He's coaching from the bench. Camperdown has never coached better. Mm. The players are playing for him. Yeah. They're having a magnificent season. He can't do any more than what he's doing. So those conversations that are already started, now if, can they afford to wait until August? Good question. So you said August, right, that they'll make that decision in August. If they're up to their is in a premiership still in August. What other decision other than re-signing Ken Hinckley can they make? I mean, can you see a world in which they say, look, no, Ken is happy to leave his coaching at the end of this year and go somewhere else and or... I think Ken's loving it. I mean, everything he says suggests that he's absolutely loving his coaching and he's committed to Port Adelaide and, and I would assume would love to stay. Now... From the other side of the fence, the Port Adelaide board and the executive and the people who make the key decisions there, I think they look at it and think, this guy's been here for a long period of time. You know, Can we make a change to perhaps start a new era at, at Port Adelaide? And, and harshly or, or not, he hasn't quite been able to get over the hump, as you said earlier. But he's made it impossible at the moment for him not to be re-signed. Im impossible. If this continues, they just have to re-sign him. They have to, don't they? They can't possibly – I mean, what's the bar? It would it would be hard to see a world in which they didn't re-sign him. But, you know, like there could be a mature conversation where he says, okay, I, I, I'm out at the end of this year. I want to move on. I've well, got that changes everything. I've got right? other options. But then what does that do in terms of him still sitting there as the coach at that time about commitment going through and possibly winning a flag? Mm. Like – does that change? The distraction anything? could be, like you said earlier. Could, well, you don't want distraction. Could do you? grow into an enormous elephant in the room that they're probably going to be forced into a decision before August, uh, just because other clubs will be dictating what they're doing. I mean, what are Richmond going to do? That Richmond aren't waiting until August. No, this whole conversation starts today. I mean, we saw up on the screen before Koshy there talking about what's taking place at Richmond, and <laughs> you know, possibly you know he's having the same conversation with people on his board off air this morning. It's interesting now to see what Brennan Gale might do. I mean, if he was thinking of going, maybe he feels like now is not the right time for the Richmond Football Club to move mm. on. Well, Sam, the AFL wants Brennan Gale. Yep. It's just whether he wants to go there. Yep. And is it best, Tim, that you rip the Band-Aid off and start again with a new CEO and a recently um, elevated president and a new coach and a new leadership group because the veterans are retiring? Is it better to do it all at once? That rather than I don't think so, no. no. So it's not ideal? No, I don't think it's ideal at all. I mean, in a succession planning, uh, you would hope that you know, you've got people ready to step up and you know, move to the next job. But in a football club situation right now, I don't think it would be the best thing for the stability of the Richmond Football Club for Bengal not to be there. Now, he may decide to stay. He may decide to go. But then you, know, you look at those big, huge pillars of your football club, the president, CEO, coach, captain, like Cochin's been a magnificent captain too. Now, I don't know that he's got a lot of football left in him either. No. So, you know, we could be sitting here in 12 months time and all of them are gone yeah. and they've got four new people in those positions. I mean, it's a whole reset for a football club.